go. And this is our monthly Q&A. So come on in and ask your questions about pet photography, the actual photography part of it, videography, the business of pet photography, volunteering, all those fun things. So hopefully my microphone's picking up here. It, I, it's only been like a month, but it feels like forever, right? I mean, people are back in school. <laughs> Leaves are turning yellow. Summer is like poof gone. It's crazy, isn't it? I have some fall sessions lined up already. Uh, I'm hoping like the weather cooperates for that. You know how that is wherever you're at in the country. If you have that tiny window of fall colors, <laughs> you, you want to like cram everybody in there that wants to get fall color photos. You have like a morning and an evening. And hopefully there's no windstorms and there's no ice storms or snow. Like last year in Colorado, we had a foot of snow on Labor Day in September. <laughs> ah, why? <laughs> oh, goodness. So uh, while you're all finding the live stream, let me just go check over here. Hope you're all doing well and you have some uh, kind of a plan on what you're doing for the fall. Um, let me go. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's showing I'm live. Good deal. Uh, I hope you have some kind of a plan for what you want to accomplish the rest of 2021. 2021. <laughs> Can you believe that? Like I was listening to someone the other day and they said, hold on, hold on. September 2021. I'm still recovering from 2020. Do you feel like that? Raise a paw. Crazy. <laughs> Uh, so we could talk about that too, your goals going forward through the end of the year, beyond, however you want to do that. Uh, while you're coming in, uh, and to any replayers, hey replayers, you're awesome too. Be sure to type it, type in a question. If you're on the replay, it's easier for me to see the questions in the comments of the video down below. So there's that. I want to show you, I do have a, a new email. You can still send me email at Silverpaw Studio, but I also now have Monique at ProPetPhotog.com. Yeah. And part of that is because I have the Pro Pet Photog oh, podcast. <laughs> I, I now have Pro Pet Photog podcast as well. So you used to know me from, uh, I have the Tales of Tales podcast. That's still up. You can listen to all the different radio shows and interviews, all that kind of stuff. But I have now switched over to Pro Pet Photog as a podcast. And it's it's through anchor.fm and they distribute it to all of your favorite podcast platforms. So whether you're on Apple or any, um, uh, Anchor is now owned by Spotify. Spotify. So you can find the Pro Pet Photog podcast anywhere. There's a couple of episodes on there now. Uh, a lot of that is going to dive a little bit deeper into what I cover here on YouTube. And then any other insights I come up with throughout the week, let me make the screen a little bit bigger. Because what I'm finding is that I'll have like these ideas. Oh, I would love to share that with my fellow pet photographers. It's not enough for a whole video. I can post it in the Facebook group over here. But also, I can put it in the podcast. Oh, um, if you love podcasts, go find that. It's very new. <laughs> Patty. Whoop, whoop. Hi, Patty. I'm so glad you made it. We're doing our little preamble here. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> so, yes, big news. I've got this new dedicated email for all of you all that goes along with the podcast. Of course, you know, obviously you probably all know I have the Instagrams, um, but -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, and the Facebook group, and obviously the actual propetphotog.com. So that's all kinds of places you can find me and all the resources and goodness that I put out there for you all. So, whew, 
uh, a little bit of catch up. I uh, want to remind you too, if you like photography and you like wildlife photography, my husband and I have started Cattail Chronicles YouTube channel. Uh, we have 10 or 12 videos up there now. It's a hoot. We love it. We just went on a giant eight day road trip through Colorado down into a little bit of New Mexico and back up through Colorado. And we have filmed quite a few videos for that channel from sand dunes to waterfalls uh, to volcanoes. It's crazy. Uh, so if you like that kind of content too, go ahead and follow us there. Uh, let me go back to comments. Okay. I haven't missed any comments. I'm being bad and drinking some coffee with my braces in. I've got three and a half weeks left. Carolyn, you're watching too. You, that's I just saw your um your post on the one with all the frogs that we photographed. Yeah, if you love sculpture gardens, wow, Loveland, Colorado is really, really, really known for sculptures. They are everywhere. <laughs> it's amazing. I had a roommate once and she worked for one of the companies. There's a dedicated company just for shipping um, sculptures from Loveland. Crazy. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm so appreciative, Carolyn, that you're over there too. Patty, you've watched. Oh, you have? Aw. Uh, editing lots of images from your shelter's pool party. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Patty, tell us more about the pool party. In my mind, it's where the city pool shuts down on the very last day. They let the dogs in <laughs> to swim around, but it also could be a, a bunch of those little Mr. Turtle pools. Oh my gosh. I need to know. <laughs> that always sounds like so much fun. I want to see like the splashing and the wet dog shaking off, you know, it's just a fun idea. We are so lucky as pet photographers to let our minds just go with creativity, uh, especially with, you know, like dogs love to just play and have fun. Not that babies and people and stuff don't, but they do some funny things and their fur just makes these cool patterns. And you all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. It's really fun and inspiring to work with animals. <laughs> I have an idea for my studio in January of 2020, right before everything happened, uh, I went to imaging, which is part of PPA here in the U.S. And I don't think I'm going to go this year. I'm going to skip it this year, uh, this January. But that year I thought, you know, I've got this studio. I'd had my studio for about three months at that point. And I, I have these colorful paper backdrops. And I just really wanted a place the dogs can come and have fun or cats, whoever, birds, um, come to the studio and have like these bright, colorful personality type sessions where I'm well known for, you know, where's my finger posing and, you know, sitting and looking at the camera. These would be sessions where they can run around and be silly and we'd have the tongue out and we'd have them, you know, hopping or whatever dogs love to do and just make it a super fun time. So I'm kind of considering offering that in my studio as like um, whimsical Wednesdays. And it could just, it, it's kind of like a mini session option, like a personality session. So I'm playing around with that idea. I'll let you know if I implement that and how that goes over, especially since I'm kind of known for these type of photos. Will my clients want to do those bright, colorful studio, short personality sessions? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Patty says, after Labor Day, the city lets the dogs in the pool ah! and the city shelter gets proceeds. $5 entry fee. That is so awesome. I went to that one time here up in Fort Collins. The city pool there does that. It was pretty chaotic and they had like these strict rules, like no people in the pool. But of course, it was chaos. This is several years ago. And all the people got in the pool with their dogs and dogs were like running around. People like businesses like mine had booths there. I'm like, why would you bother? <laughs> You're going to get soaking wet. Oh my gosh. I'm super excited to see what you come up with. Carolyn, your favorite shots of the dog park are in the water. I wonder if I could, should start sharing some of my favorites. In yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes, please. Oh, Yes, people share in that Facebook group. I would love to see that. It's so inspiring. It gives me new ideas all the time. Yes. Senior Axon made it to a live show. Yes, I saw your last video. It seemed like it was so hot out. 
<laughs> it'd be so melting. And it reminded me again, I need to get out my little Atomos Ninja and record with that. <laughs> You've inspired me. I've got to get out and do that. Yay. Okay. I, I would love that, Carolyn. I love the interaction in there. Um, I know I've been on vacation for the last week, but I've had service. So I've popped in quite a few times, but it's fun to see you all in there answering questions as well. I want it to be that community atmosphere. Yay. I don't know what possessed me to drink coffee at 3 p.m. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, what? It's so great to see you. Thanks for being here, being here live and interacting. And I just love that. It gives me so much energy. Uh, hopefully someday I'll get out back and teaching classes and workshops and uh, conferences and things like that. So I used to do that years ago. I used to go to conferences when I was a speaker there. I was a teacher there. Love doing that. Um, so at some point we'll do that again. And like I've said here, I will have an event here in my area of Colorado at some point, probably in the next oh, couple of years. Ah, yes. So that's exciting. That's something I'm looking forward to. Um, so I am looking at my YouTube channel, kind of looking at what I've done so far. If there's any questions specifically on the videos I've produced recently, uh, we I had the river walk with the dogs from the Humane Society. So Frank and I went back out there. We took the dogs down to the river. It, it didn't come up with big splashes and things like Patty probably saw at the pool, but it was still great. And I did make them a small, like one minute video to... Uh, recruit people to be the dog walkers for that. So I hope they are able to utilize that video. Um, that was something different. Uh, oh, I designed that album, which actually, I'm not sure if I've taken it to the studio yet. <laughs> the album design used to be so intimidating to me that I wouldn't even offer it to my clients. But now it's so great because, you know, we'll say, okay, so you want to get a picture like this to put in your living room. But, you know, during the session, I'll take all kinds of little outtakes and funny pictures too. And we might gather enough of those for an album. So I plant that idea in their head during the planning meeting. And so I show them the samples and show them on the price list. We go out, we have a fun time at the session. And then we come back, they have so many to choose from. And typically what people do during the, the ordering meeting is I use ProSelect and we narrow things down from this much to exactly half. I don't know how people do it, but they always pick exactly half <laughs> of the images. And usually that we just take, have to take away a few and we have an album. And so when they get down to that first culling of their favorites, I'll say, this is a perfect amount for an album. And they're like, Hmm. And so they'll think about it and then we'll go off and we'll design, you know, whatever they need for their walls and gifts and things like that. And then I'll say, okay, but you still have like 25 or 30 in here that I know you love. Let's make a little, what do you think about a little album? And people, a lot of times now that I'm really talking about it more, they'll be like, yeah, that sounds great. And I offer my albums, uh, with digitals or without digitals. And so uh, it, it helps with price difference. So like some people just don't want all the digitals. They're like, I don't know what I'd do with all those. All I really want is the book. And that's how it started. And so I offer digitals of the album separate as a whole entire package of the digitals from the album. So <laughs> that's getting a little bit more into the business back end of things, but I know y'all here are interested in that kind of thing. So let's see, I had that. We and then I had a couple of <laughs> a couple of videos with my daughter's dogs. That was really fun with the splashing and the milk and cookies. And I got my new camera bag. So uh, those are some of my most recent videos. If you have any questions on that, uh, I love showing everyone what goes through the lens. But it's so heavy. I had to get a sturdy cold shoe mount to mount it on my camera. Yeah, I wondered about that. <laughs> <laughs> because I love using the 200 or the 70 to 200 so much and then adding that on there. And I got a mount for it that I can kind of swivel it, but I'm so worried 
about the weight and everything. And then I had this crazy idea to put it on my camera when I'm using the 200 to 600 out on my other channel. I'm not going that crazy yet. <laughs> Can't we see you start doing videos? Without? You know, one of the things, since you're here, that I need to look more into it. I need to go watch a video. I need to just try it out and take a day. And I know I've been saying that forever is I want to be able to show the video of everything happening, but then take a picture. And so I don't know if I have to like turn off the monitor, you know, and then take the picture and then turn it back on or change anything in there. Or if it's just as if it's just like everything that's through the viewfinder and then the photo gets saved. I have like a SSD for it. The photos and the video get saved on there or does yeah. So those kind of just logistical things I need to figure out and then, and then figure out an actual photo shoot to show it. That was too much equipment to take to my daughter's house. As you know, my dog Bay doesn't really love flash. Um, and now that's cooling down a little bit though. I think this would be a good time to use it. So <sighs> yes, it just answers so many questions right away. Doesn't it? Like uh, oftentimes it's very, very hard to decide or, or vision, and we're really good at envisioning things, what the view is from our perspective. And those ninjas just help so much. Um, and then showing the dial through of the settings too. Um, I'm pretty quick when I change my settings, so I don't always talk through them. Okay, Carolyn, still a long way from having a business, but my dream is to offer personality, action, photography, and album is perfect. For yes, yes, totally agree. I think that would be awesome. And it's so, like, if you watch that video, it's so much easier than you think it is. Now, that's a really basic album, which is often what I do, but I've made some albums, even for my daughter with uh, my grandson, is where you can have a picture in the background or different color borders or different blocks of color. And uh, I have an album coming in that's got words in it. I don't normally do that, but I thought it was fitting to put some words in their album. You can really uh, expand that, but that program was just crazy easy. I thought I had to invest hundreds and hundreds to get some program that I have to do every year. And I just don't sell enough albums to justify that. So I thought, wow, <laughs> I've got this down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just, it's such a, it's such a relief to your clients too, because when you're sitting there and they've got their 25 or 30 that they love and you're like, great, all you have to do is pick out a cover material. I have a whole box of sample cover materials and then I'll design the album and send you the proof. And they're like, great. <laughs> and they almost never make any changes because we're really good at that. I had one person that just wanted to mix them up a little bit more. I tend to be a little bit like put these dogs together and this dog together. And she just wanted a little bit different, which was super easy to do. Um, and in your action ones, won't that be fun? And then it just, if people just say, here's my favorite 25 or 30. Great. <laughs> there is actually someone I follow in Arizona. I can't remember her, her name. Um, but she does pup and me sessions and that's what she does. Uh, it's you and your dog and she does a session and makes a book and every single session has that. Um, that might be an interesting business model for you. Very simple. People know exactly what they're getting. I think she's underpriced them personally, but I don't know, you know, her overhead and her market and that kind of thing. There's so much that goes into pricing. I live in a very fairly expensive area of the country to live in. And so my cost of living is higher. My cost of doing business is higher. Um, those kind of things. I have a studio that I have to cover. Uh, I don't know. In other areas of the country, you can maybe charge less than I would have to charge. Or maybe you'd have to charge more. I don't know. But it's a cool business model. Every one of her sessions, it's you and your dog, out on location, and you get an album. Bam. <laughs> and it's this much. And she's booked up, I think, through the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she just, she's doing it so seamlessly. I just think, you know how people get those decision fatigues? Like if there's too many decisions, they won't make any decisions. If I show someone a gallery of 200 images, that's too many, you know, unless they're very distinctly different. If they have 
five different dogs and they, we do three different backgrounds and each dog individual. Okay. You might end up with a lot, but when you go through the ordering process, you're going to be very organized with it. Right. Um, I just think that would be, I don't know. It just sounds like a cool idea. And Carolyn, you'd probably be perfect at making the uh, business model like that. You know, I don't think so, Patty. I have run the numbers. I've been to imaging mm, four or five times. And I always, just for travel and food and hotel, uh, those three to four days cost me about $1,500 every, every year. That's not counting anything I buy at the expo or programs from the speakers or books or anything like that. I just have figured it's $1,500 every time minimum that I go, which is okay. But I'm not, I'm not super excited to be around a giant, giant group of 10,000 people yet. <laughs> um, I thought the world would be a little bit closer, but it's not really. Um, and I'm thinking that I might go every other year at this point. So yeah, I don't think I'll go this year. I haven't looked ahead to see where it'll be next year. They go to Atlanta probably every three years because that's where they're headquartered. So um, maybe that one. We'll see. But yeah, I don't know. It feels like the the profit that we make from the fall goes away so quickly <laughs> when we end up doing, you know, end of year taxes and any anything for the new year. So I don't think so. Are you going, Patty? I know it's pretty close to you, which is convenient. And also, while we're talking about business models, I want to let you know, I, I reached out to somebody in Denver that is, I'm going to interview, and he runs his pet photography business out of a, um, a small, almost like utility trailer. So that's really cool. So he just drives around the area and he has a, a trailer big enough inside to have a small studio space. And I think it's really intriguing. That's what I originally was going to do with Silver Paw Studio. The silver was going to be a silver Airstream. Never quite did that, <laughs> but he's done it. So I'm going to interview him here coming up pretty soon and I'll be on YouTube. And then I have another special guest at the end of October. All right. Uh, let's see. Hold that thought. Patty. Ah, oh, very cool. Okay. So you can report back to us. <laughs> Yay. And keep in mind, there is a whole group of people who started this. Margaret Bryant. Look on Facebook. There's a whole group of pet photographers that meet up. I want to say it's the night before the whole conference. And so generally they'll find like a little restaurant at the conference center to meet. And so all the pet photographers get together. And I did the video on that, you know, a couple of years ago where I interviewed everyone impromptu. <laughs> that made people really nervous, but they did it anyway. It was fine. So yeah, definitely get in with the people that are going. It's, it's fun. You get to share a lot of stories. Looking forward to interview with the mobile photographer. That should be fun. Okay. Oh, yes. So <laughs> back on track, Monique. There is another very well-known pet photographer. She's taught on Creative Live. She has taught on PPA. Just recently, she did a whole series on PPA about setting up your business for pet photographers. She used to own a studio in Las Vegas. She also paints the pet portraits on request. That's the whole part of her, her business. Does anyone know who I'm talking about? This is a person that I think this might be her second year, maybe third. She does a photo tour of the entire U S and so she books clients all throughout the U S through fourth quarter. And she doesn't photograph the pets in her trailer, but her and her dog or two dogs, one or two dogs, they travel around just to, just her and her dogs. They travel around and they photograph families and pets all through the U.S. through fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she will be. Um, so I reached out to her in a moment of bravery. <laughs> 
And I said, hey, it looks like you're stopping in Fort Collins. I, I think your business model is very intriguing. And I also think that the people that watch my YouTube would think it's intriguing. Would you be interested? Would you have time for me to come out and interview you? She goes, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I even gave her ideas for places for her client session here in our area. And so I'm going to, at the end of October, interview Arika Dorf. Yeah. Uh, so in, before that happens, though, let me know if there's any questions that you want to know. It's pretty amazing. If you look at Arika Dorf photography or pedography, I don't know how she's done it, said her name, but on Facebook, you could see the map that all oh, how she's going. Um it's pretty interesting. And then she's been showing on Instagram uh, the sessions that she's doing along the way. And then she just sits in her camper at night and edits. Yeah. And this is what she does through fourth quarter. So I'm pretty excited to talk to her. She's extremely business savvy. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to feel like a little intimidated, I think. <laughs> But uh, I'm, I'm excited to talk to her and share her knowledge with you. So, yeah. Oops, looks like we got to block somebody. Da, 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 da. Hold on while I block a rude person. Do, do, do. Guess I'm famous. <laughs> uh, that was part of the reason I left... Um, Uh, Periscope it was because there were so many rude, rude people on there. So anyway, I hope those awful comments are now gone because I did block him. I, I'm a one person show on these live streams. I don't have someone in the background watching and monitoring the comments. So, eh. <laughs> uh, okay. That person I think is gone. Okay. Yeah. So Patty, let's see. Imaging. USA 2022 speakers and because I know Kim Hartz often is a speaker at these um, they usually have like the same two or three pet photographers do all of the talks for pet photography which I think is a little bit annoying uh yep Arika Dorf yeah she'll be speaking there yeah super cool Yay. And there she is with a hound. Yay. Oh, Kim Hartz is going to be there too. Hopefully she has a new program. This person has dogs. I don't know what she's going to talk about. Cool. Okay. So there is an amazing lineup <laughs> for imaging if you're able to go. And Kim Hartz. Yeah. I've seen Kim Hartz a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, I know. Spam bots. But ugh, gross. <laughs> ah, I know, right? Ah. Yeah. Yeah. So look up Arika Dorf, everyone, and uh, Kim Hartz. Kim Hartz is interesting. She has a studio at her home. I think it's above her garage in Texas. And it's babies and fur babies, I think, is what she used to do. I don't know if she's still in that track. So she does, she photographs babies and dogs <laughs> and cats, I think. And they come to her. Kind of a cool setup. Um... And then, yeah, Arika's got the the traveling uh, photography, and she's photographing outside. So, and the other person I'm going to interview, he photographs him in his trailer. I'm, it's just fascinating, fascinating. So, um, wealth of information. <laughs> I'm excited to share these types of business models. I think we tend to think that we're pigeonholed into one way of doing things. Um, people have found very creative ways to be even more creative because we're in such a creative industry already. It's super cool. Uh, to figure out other ways. Like we've already talked about three, photographing dogs in a trailer, uh, traveling around in a trailer to photograph dogs and people around the country and doing like a pup and me uh, session and album. That's your offering, session and album. And I'm sure she has things you could buy beyond that, you know, like uh, wall art, things like that. Um, so we've already explored like three very different types. So that's exciting. I like that. I love talking about the business side and the marketing side and all the psychology that goes around behind all of the other things that we do. You know, I asked Steve one day, I said, 
let me let me ask you this is early on uh who do you think my clients are my potential clients who can i reach here in in the community and he had to think for a second i said do you think that it's everybody with a dog and he said yeah yeah pretty much that's your clientele everyone with a dog i said nope it sure isn't <laughs> <laughs> it's not, you're not marketing to everybody with a dog, you know? Um, and I can get into that deeper. <laughs> I do actually, this reminds me, I have a big video. I was just working on it before we went live coming out on Friday. I really hope you watch this because if you are struggling to get clients, which I've seen in our Facebook group, a lot of times people say my biggest struggle is how do I find clients? Okay. I brainstormed a kind of a long video. It's less than half an hour though, of all kinds of ways that you can find clients and clients can find you. So be sure to watch the video this Friday, because you are going to get ideas that you had not heard of for finding clients. And some of them are used in other professions and they're not used often in photography. I don't know why. Some things are stuff we do too much. And we need to do different things. Um, some things we maybe have gotten out of the habit of. Seriously, I have, uh, <laughs> I'm going to pat myself on the back. But I really wanted to share all these ideas with you. This is something I would have looked for when I was starting. And this is stuff that I brainstorm constantly. How am I going to find a client? How am I going to find a client? Uh, one of the things that when I went through my coaching earlier this year, we said, okay, how many clients do I need at what average? Well, what, what would I like? What's my ideal? How many pet photography clients? How many videography clients? That kind of thing. And one of the things that uh, we came up with is he talks about counting backwards. And so instead of saying like, it'd be nice to have 10 clients, photo clients this year at my, uh, the average that I've calculated I need to pay the bills and have a profit. So let's say it's 10. Instead of putting a hash mark on, on the wall, you know, on your whiteboard or in a program counting up. What if you had 10 and you took a hash mark away every time so you can see yourself getting closer and closer and closer and closer to your goal? Ah, so this is what I did. <laughs> I have some hooks over on one of my whiteboards here. And um, I, gosh, a couple of years ago now, I had these little paw print, silver paw prints. I, I had printed on the back. They say, sorry, that's loud. <laughs> they say, I am a silver paw star. And so whenever someone completes a session, I'll give them one of these for each of their pets. Pretty cool, right? And so this chain started off uh, in June with 10 and I'm down to four. Now, the only problem I have with this method is that they get, instead of per client, it's per dog. So <laughs> I have to be careful that I'm not patting myself on the back too much. I do still need to find some clients for these. But if I knew I only needed four more clients at my ideal average for the rest of the month, <sighs> that sounds doable, doesn't it? Let me know if you're all still here. It's gotten real quiet in the comments. Um, doesn't that seem doable? We have four months left of the year almost. Wait, four, three and a half. <laughs> three and a half months left. And if I knew that my ideal average client, I needed four more of those. And I had these up. And then, you know, I brainstormed every single way I can market to them. One of those ways is going to get me at least one client. Yeah, that sounds exciting. That sounds very much more doable than, okay, so I have to reach the 150,000 people that live in my city and how am I going to reach them? Okay, well, if I, I wrote blog posts and put something on Facebook and did this display down here, like, ah, instead you think, okay, this is the kind of person who would like pictures like this. Where am I? Like this. This is where they are. Here's some ways I could reach them. And every time I get one. And so by the end of the year, this should be empty, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're enraptured. I know. Um, 
It's crazy how fast. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're editing too? Yeah, I should be doing that. I photographed uh, probably four or five dogs at the shelter this morning and I haven't even loaded all onto my computer because we were out of food after being gone for nine days. Um, the other thing that I've done since I'm on this kick, hold on, is the other hook, I have several hooks up there, is one of my goals is to get commercial video clients. So local pet-based businesses that need video. And so I had the USB sticks made with my little tagline, tell all your tales with tales, silverfoststudio.com. And so these are USB sticks. And so although I deliver their videos digitally, I still put them on a stick and I have little paw print ribbons on each stick. And so they have a little archive copy of it too. And there's no reason why you can't do this for your uh, pet photography stills too. Um, so people might appreciate that. Obviously, I like to sell prints. I want it to be a finished project, a product. I feel like I don't want to sell them a bag of groceries. I want to sell them the meal, finished meal, right? Um, so I want to sell them the prints and things like that. But if they've also purchased a large number of digitals, why not put it on a little stick? Uh, one of the veterinary clients that I work with, I had gone to their office a few months ago and on the shelf behind her, was the USB stick of the last uh, video I made for them. She's like, oh yeah, I've got it right here. I'm like, yay, because it's so easy for people to lose things. So it's nice to have a little thing. Not only can I count down that I'm reaching my goal every time I get rid of these, it's also kind of a cool thing for your clients. <laughs> that was a little bit of a tangent. I hope you don't mind. The long and short of that is that I came up with this giant list of ways that you can market your pet photography business using four categories. I won't get into it more because I want you to watch that video and really absorb that and take some notes. And then what came of that is I've decided that a fast list of ways to do it is not enough information for you. So I'm going to make that into some mini courses. So each of those four categories I'm going to make into I don't know how long, an hour or two video course, and I'm going to make some uh, Canva templates also. So that'll be all on Pro Pet Photog, but it'll probably, those probably won't come out till November. Uh, but I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into some of these concepts so I can give you examples and that, you know, you can get some templates and I can go into reasons why you would want to do this and how you could do it. Um, so Friday's video is very packed with information, take notes, <laughs> and then know that I'll be coming out with that course in just a few weeks. Part of the, what's holding me back is that the air conditioning has been broken at the studio almost the entire summer. Makes it really difficult to film in there. And hopefully I don't look like I'm too <laughs> like hot in this next video because it was filmed in the studio, but there's that. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I know. I feel like sometimes there's little things like that. I just want to throw out there for y'all, which is part of the reason with the, um, do, 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 do the new podcast too. Now I did skip last week, obviously, because I was in, where was I Friday? Santa Fe. <laughs> I was in New Mexico. So I did not record a podcast episode last week, but it's a baby podcast at this point, three or four episodes, if that, um, and that'll be weekly and I'll, it'll come out every Monday because uh, then we're getting back into the gear of uh, business. Whoop, whoop, whoop. How fun is that? Just me? <laughs> uh, you know about the no AC problems? Oh my gosh. It was, it was um, dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say, <laughs> because my studio is in a big building with other businesses, mostly like office space businesses. And partway through the summer, we started realizing it's, it's not cooling off as well as it should in here. So we let them know and they're like, okay, we'll come out and do something. And they did a little something, didn't really help. They came out, did a little something, didn't really help. <laughs> and then finally they said, Unfortunately, we were trying to get the air conditioning to last until October, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> you think? We're in here. Like every door in the building is open. There's fans going. It's really loud. It's really hot. Some people couldn't even work there. <laughs> and the rent went up a lot this summer. So 
at when I was gone last week, they said they they finally got the permits from the city and everything was good and they were craning them on top of the building. So I'm so hopeful because <laughs> I just want to get down there and spend a full day uh, recording this this class for you uh, for marketing. Ah, yeah. So if, I mean, if I can get this filmed and out to you even sooner so you can apply it during this season, I will. Um, but you will get a lot from this Friday's video too. Okay. 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 What else? Does anyone have questions um, about any, I'm looking at, I'm looking at my other screen of all the different videos I've done recently of any of my recent videos, any videos you'd like to see me make going forward. I'm always open to ideas there. Um, I did tease out that I want to make a video about pricing. I haven't put all those ideas yet together. So that's going to take a little bit of time to do. Um, if you liked my studio table build that I did early, early, early on in YouTube, I'm making version 2.0 probably this week. Oh, yes. Very exciting. Um, so I got those kind of things coming up. What else do you want to see? I'm happy to try to try to do some. I know somebody in the comments of videos recently had asked if I can do some high speed sync uh, flash type photos, and I would love to. Except my dog is my um, most available model, and she hates flash. The, the the little speed light outside, she doesn't even notice. But if I'm in a studio with the big studio strobes, mm, she's not. She's not playing that. So I need to find another model for that. So that's what put, it's kind of, I haven't done that type of video yet, but what else would you like? Let's see. Oh, where'd my mouse go? There it is. Okay. Patty says, I have a workflow question. Do you utilize collections in Lightroom? Um, sometimes. <laughs> my collections in Lightroom are typically if I'm working on a project. So if I want to highlight Mm, how to photograph do black dogs and cats. I will make an entire collection on that or a collection of all fall themed inspired photos. I'll make a collection for that. Uh, tongue out Tuesday type pictures or whisker Wednesday. I'll make collections for those, but not usually for my clients. I have, however, made clients lately for my Cattail Chronicles because I wanted to make duplicates and edit those duplicates just for the, the video and for Instagram. So I've done a little bit in there. Typically what I'll do is I'll do a star system in Lightroom for my workflow is I'll go through all of them and give them one star. And then I'll go back through if there's anything that are just too similar. If it looks like someone's going to be at the eye doctor, this one or this one, get rid of one of them. It's too close. And so I narrow that all down. I do the main edits and just export them. And so I export them into a folder within the original folder saying, uh, you know, client name, pro select. And then I put those images onto my laptop and that's, and I take that laptop to the sales meeting. So that's kind of my workflow. I said that super fast. So if I'm leaving out a detail that you were looking for, let me know, Patty. But collections would be a great way to do it. Yeah, pricing. I think pricing is helpful for a lot of people. When I first started out, there was someone who had this pricing calculator, which is outdated. <laughs> you can't really use that kind of calculator, but it was so helpful. She had an instant following. Uh, so everyone always has lots of questions about pricing. And um, so I got I want to put it together in um, in a good way, though. So so it's thorough, I guess. <laughs> so be watching for that in the next few months. <laughs> yeah, when I find a model. Um, I think my daughter is going to visit, but she won't be bringing the dogs. Um, and I think I just need to reach out to a friend here and just say, hey, come down to the studio on Saturday and <laughs> help me film this video. And I, I'm sure I'd have a lot of takers. <laughs> do you use external, internal hard drives? How much space do you get a year? Oof, oh my gosh. So this has evolved over time. What I used to do is every year I get a new hard drive and I would label it, you know, 2018 <laughs> and it would be like one or two terabytes. And then at the end of the year, I would put away that hard drive, basically kind of archive it. And then I got cameras with higher megapixels and I was filling them up faster and now I'm doing video. And, ah. So um, I do still like this. 
I did have a problem when I switched from Mac to PC because the Mac based hard drives, my PC would not read. So I haven't taken those down. Those are pretty old. I could take them down to a service and have the all the data put on a, a PC based computer. Uh, what we've figured out now, because Steve is a computer expert, his office is in the room ab above mine and he has set up a RAID array. Uh, so we have a bank of hard drives now. <laughs> and um, so I have a drive on there that I use and I do change, uh, you know, every year in Lightroom, I make a, a new catalog for the year. Um, so, so far that's worked out okay for me. And I would say if I was still doing this, I would probably do the two terabyte type system and do one a year. Um, this is something we took on our trip this last week. It was fantastic to be able to put them all on a hard drive. Yay. <laughs> and what I'm doing right now for YouTube videos is I have on my internal hard drive, I have the videos I'm working on right now. And then when those are all done, I move them to an external drive. It just makes uh, pro. Um, Premiere Pro work faster. <laughs> Let's see. Patty, thanks. I've discovered that's probably to do it by files instead of collections, like for selects, etc. Mm hmm. Okay. I think I'm following you there. Files. Okay. Hey, Morgan's here. Hello, Morgan. We're 45 minutes in. If you have questions, ask them now. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered a lot of ground, so hopefully you're able to watch the replay as well. Thanks for being here. Uh, let me see here. Did I answer all of these questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, one more time. I know you all know this. Lots and lots and lots of resources I've been adding to like crazy over at propetphotog.com. And some are free, some are paid, some are very inexpensive. Um, and I'll be adding more that go along with the video for marketing that comes out Friday. Yes. Okay. Here is the Facebook group. If you would like to be part of that, we'd love for you to be part of the conversation in there. Here's my new email address just for you all. You can still send me an email at Silverpaw Studio, but here's one special for a pro pet photog. Obviously, I have an Instagram. Um, and then the Pro Pet Photog podcast, which is going to take more of a business turn, talk a little deeper into what I've done on YouTube. And um, there's like some segments in there. It's going to be like official. <laughs> so there's a rundown again of ways that you can reach me. Let's see. Patty says for files, I can rename them. I don't think I can do that in collections. Rename the files? Like the collections. I always have a name for the collection. There's that. And see, the, the thing is, when I import my photos, that's when I name them. So it'll be like um, 0920-2021 Carter. Like that's their last name, let's say. And if, if it's a common last name, it'll be Carter, you know, Amy, whatever. And then in the keywords... I put in dogs, names, breeds, you know, where we were at, what park, location, anything else. So it applies to everyone. And this is what I apply on import. And that's the, and the, so the file, the folder name and the file name were basically the same. And then I keep the original extension, the camera applies. So it might be 0920-2021 Carter Amy dash uh, 9467, because that's the original image number. And that's just how I organize that. And then when I star them and when I export them, I might name them a little bit different, but keep that original uh, four last num numbers. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. <laughs> Boy, maybe that could be a whole video, right? Changing out drives year by year for now. Hopefully it can invest with the rate array as well in the near future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think one of the problems I had was that these tend to fail. <laughs> so a couple of years ago, I had one that failed and I was able to recover it. Uh, there is a recovery, uh, you know, perk in the PPA membership. So I was able to recover that drive, but it made me real nervous. So I wanted that right array um, double, double uh, save. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. I know. And I don't think, well, yeah, Raider Ray was kind of expensive, I suppose. 
but I like the peace of mind. <laughs> Definitely. I do name them, but sometimes I want to redo the end number to resequence to get them in another order. Oh, you know, you can do that within Lightroom. You can right click and rename. Uh, you can definitely do that. Or you can just when you export. So you can also change that number on export and there's all kinds of different export presets that you can put in or, you know, uh, selections. So you could have it be a sequential. So instead of, it could be, you know, Carter, Amy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that kind of thing, instead of the camera applied numbers. Yeah. So you could do that when you export and you can do it, but I think it's one picture at a time. If I remember, excuse me, if I remember right, in Lightroom, it's one picture at a time. Good question, though. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. You know how people like have this naming structure that they've just used forever? <laughs> it kind of, it threw Steve off because he was managing all the files for our trip and he names them different. I said, no, 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 no. You have to change that. My brain cannot compute that. <laughs> I have to have it month, day, year. And he was doing it like, oh my gosh, um, day, month, year, or something crazy. I was like, no, no, I can't do that. <laughs> so I made him change all the file folders. I could do a video on workflow. Yeah. Um, two years ago, I think I did a video on my exporting workflow. So definitely look for that. Um, oh gosh, I have YouTube pulled up over here, but oh my goodness. I don't even know. I'd have to go back a long ways to find it. But it's my export. I've made a preset into that because um, like when I, I have different watermarks, so maybe it's gray, maybe it's blue, maybe it's in this corner, maybe it's in this corner, maybe it's 70% opaque, maybe it's this big. Uh, so I have a bunch of different exports. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. If I can find them real quick here, I will put the link. Well, gee whiz. I think <laughs> I really scrolled quickly. Where did it go? Oh, look at those Bailey pictures. Um, oh, darn. I'm not, I'm not finding it now. Sorry, guys. But yeah, somewhere I have an exports preset. <laughs> Carolyn, my Lightroom files are a mess. Ah, I've been trying to find a video showing how to move files around in Lightroom. Oh, uh, click, drag, drop. <laughs> so if you make a new folder, you can just drag them in there. That's all you have to do um, to move them. And with Lightroom, it, it's doing this back and forth cataloging. So it's going to break if you go out to your file folders, your Explorer or your Photos folders, and you move them there, then it's going to break the the chain of where Lightroom says they are. So if you can at all, move them within Lightroom. You can fix it later. You know, you could find find the parent files, but it's much easier if you move them within Lightroom. And most of the time, I don't know why there's not as much information about that. You could just click them and drag them into the folder you want them to be in. That's the, that's the easiest way. Uh, oh, see, Andrea, I always forget about Bridge. <laughs> I think Bridge... Um, by the time I was using Lightroom and Photoshop, people weren't using Bridge very much. So I never really added it to my workflow, but that's awesome. Oh my gosh, Carolyn, if you, a bridge is part of the whole suite. So if you go through bridge at all, here you go. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> Fantastic. Whew. Yeah. Morgan, do you use any fast prime lenses for your photography? You know what? I don't right now. I used to. I used to have a 50 mil 1.8 and 85 1.8. And that was what I used for like the first two years were those two lenses. And then I wanted to have more versatility. I was doing some interior pictures of buildings for the shelters and, and clients. And I needed a wider angle lens. that had a little bit of a zoom. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'll check out that 70 to 200 everyone loves. And I freaking love it. Uh, <laughs> and my bag is so heavy by now. Um, but it's an awesome idea. There are so many, so many great lenses. The 50, the 85, I've heard great things about a 135. Um, it'd be worth renting them if you think that's a, a, what you want to do. I, I, that's exciting. Let's see. 
yeah okay so we did that try that didn't work for me oh oh faster computer could be hmm interesting carolyn hmm. yeah not sure there yeah it's interesting like i don't even know how to access bridge every once in a while it just pops up <laughs> here do you want to do these things okay sure oh that never mind that's acr <laughs> that's adobe camera raw um yeah that that was a pretty powerful piece of the adobe suite hmm. good point I, I don't often rename my files only when i export them i might rename them yeah, I, I, every once in a while, I'll accidentally export and not include that four digit at the end. And it's so hard to match up. Okay, the client wanted this. Which picture is it in Lightroom? Ah, so I like the Lightroom and the exported file to be very close to the same or at least have those last four digits the same. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, so I try to keep those very similar if I can. Um, in ProSelect, you don't have as much room to for people to see the name of it. So oftentimes I would just be like, uh, those exported files just for ProSelect are going to say like Carter-2356. Um, so we can see it right then and there. And I, I have like my notepad. I'll say, oh, okay, 2356 for that dog. And, you know, 2547 for that dog. And I'll write little notes. So I want to be able to see that. So that's something to think about too. Video idea, favorite desk chair to use for editing. <laughs> you know what? I've had this chair for probably five years now. I don't even know where I got it. <laughs> Steve has a chair he swears by. He got it many moons ago. And it's one of those has the mesh back and it's supposed to be good for you. And I don't like it, <laughs> uh, but he swears by it. Oh my gosh. I use photo mechanical before I use light or bridge. Oh, I forgot about that one. Matrix photo design. Thanks for adding that in. So there you go. Ah, oh, Patty, Caroline, photo mechanical. I forgot all about that. I don't know much about it. Um, Matrix photo design. I don't know if you're in the Facebook group, uh, but you're welcome to add that information to the Facebook group as well. These are all great things to know. It's so great to have an organ be organized before um as you're just starting your company or like during the slow times to start thinking about the best way to organize <laughs> i actually have a call i need to return to someone she left me a message while i was on my way back today and she said hey so you took this picture of me in 2017 and i need a new picture for my new job do you still have those i'm like oh my so I need to go back and find that. And I categorize that under her last name. So I will definitely be able to find it. But you got to think about those things long term. I have people all the time say, okay, you photographed my dogs two years ago. One of them just passed away. Can I get another print? So you have to be able to have these fast recall of where these, um, where these pictures are. Yay. Yay. Okay, cool. Great, 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 great. Um, so be thinking long term too. So I'm assuming that your studio is going to be open for many years and that you will have clients whose animals maybe pass away and they want to get a picture, more pictures. Um, so how are you going to find that? Are you going to remember exactly what date you photographed them? Are you going to remember it by the dog's name? Are you going to remember it by the last name? How do you want to organize it? How would you remember to go and find that? Yeah. Okay, y'all, it's, uh, <laughs> it has been one hour already, unbelievably. It's been so, so great to chat with you. Um, let's see. What is this? Were you the famous pet photo gal on Periscope? Yes, I was. <laughs> uh, DG, are you um, in San Francisco? Yay. Um, keyword. Yeah, keywords. Yes, I got to be way better at keywords. That, that's a good note for me. Because like I was saying, when I import, I put all kinds of keywords in there. Probably it's kind of fun to sift through those too and say, how many have I taken in this location kind of thing. Um, but keywords, definitely good. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me if you saw me on Periscope all those years ago. That's where I very first started on video. Yeah. You're in LA. Okay. 
I'm trying. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me how if we if we've met because I've I've talked at functions too, so maybe we've met. Yay, Caroline! We've enjoyed uh, hanging out with you. I'm I'm doing pretty good at doing our once a month Q and A. If you don't know, I do have the community center over on Pro Pet Photog, and the goal there is to do once a month private uh, group Q and As like this, but things that aren't going to be like published to the world, so we can talk about um, our very particular um, things that we need to talk about. Um, so. If that's something that you're ready to add, check it out, the community center at propetphotog.com. And also I have one-to-ones. So if you get to a point where you're like, ah, I need to have this question answered, maybe I can get Monique on the phone or on Zoom and we could do a one-to-one. -one. So that's over there too. There's just a ton of stuff. <laughs> okay. Yes, you were so great. Didn't meet in person. Aw, aw. Are you a pet photographer too? If you are, hey, you can join our Facebook group. Oh, yeah, I think we're just about up to 50 members. So it's very manageable. <laughs> and it's a fantastic group of people. All the people that you see on this chat, almost all of them are in that Facebook group, I believe. And I love you all. You're fantastic. You're wonderful. And we're just a wealth of knowledge for each other. Yay. <sighs> okay, let me take that banner down. Get another sip of coffee, just in case you have any last minute words in here, because uh, we're going to wrap it up now. Oh, yes. Thank you, Patty. Portfolio Reviews is one of those, too. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> um, everybody on here, also follow Senor Yaxon because he does YouTube videos on pet photography, too. Um, so his last few have been on location. Watch him do the full photo session. So um, so go follow him too. Want to start a business, but oh, you don't like Facebook. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. So my video coming out on Friday, there's a ton, a ton, a ton of ways to market your business besides Facebook. You're welcome, Patty. Uh, do you have any videos showing how you do the live streams? Oh, I don't think I do. I've shared those with networking groups when I've done talks at networking groups or in any of my mastermind groups. I will show a video of my setup. <laughs> but if you all are interested in knowing how I set this all up, I have one, two, three, four lights, um, my microphone, my webcam, and two monitors, and I use StreamYard. There's the short story. <laughs> Okay, great, 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 great. Yeah, so check out that video um, on Friday. And I'll, you know, you're welcome to watch any of my videos. But I think that one will be especially useful if you have a business or you're thinking about starting a business. Lots of cool ideas. Yeah, I think it's the same name. Um, if you want to put a link, Senor Yaxon, I think I'm saying that just a little bit wrong. Sorry. Uh, if you want to put a link in the comments, you can. Yeah, because I think all of us here would enjoy uh, watching your videos. Okay, so that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for coming out and asking your questions. I hope I gave you value today. Uh, remember on the live streams, you can also um, tap the like button. I think that does something for the algorithms. Uh, okay, you're going to put, he's going to put the link to his channel in this chat. So I'll give him a second there. Uh, I've kind of, my channel's plateaued a little bit. So if you are liking the videos, make sure you interact with them somehow. I guess that's a thing, um, for the algorithms to show it to more people, uh, share it with anyone you think might be interested in some of these tips, even rescues. Um, if you know rescues that are struggling with some of their photography, I have several videos that can help them and their foster networks. Last we talked, I bought the small foldable table from Walmart about six years ago. Well, yeah, there was a couple of reasons there, D. <laughs> um, Periscope got inundated with um, trolls and I went through a very awful time in my life. <laughs> so I kind of dropped off everything for about a year. Yeah. Oh my gosh, your dad jokes, I live for. I am there for dad jokes. <laughs> and the speech bubbles from the dogs, keep it coming. Keep it coming. I'm telling you. 
uh yeah and d i'll be um making a version two of that table and my life is fine now it's it's fine it was just real real messy for about a year there and and <laughs> yeah uh so it's all good now woohoo people are seven yes okay it's fun stuff dad jokes dogs he uh he's got it all over there <laughs> yeah okay everyone Let's wrap it up. And you all know how I end all of my videos. <laughs> you can say it with me if you want. Are you ready for this? Oh, wait, I got two more comments. Yes, you're welcome. Trolls were getting to me. Yeah. Ah, darn trolls. Okay. So let's wrap it up, everyone. Say it with me. Say it with me. Where'd it go? As always, <laughs> I wish you many whoops, purrs, and T R E A T S S. Okay. Have a super, super day. And we'll see you here next month or in all the places that we talked about. Okay. All right. Bye everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.